from the Zip Cave in Huntington, West Virginia. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Welcome to the Geek Zip Podcast. I'm all out of bubblegum. Comic books, superheroes, Marvel, DC, sci-fi, TV, music, wrestling, and so much more. That's no moon. Submit your questions and or comments to geekzippodcast at gmail.com. Where are you? Here. Go! Now. We rescue a world from mysticism and tyranny. And usher in a future brighter than anything we can imagine. Here's Ryan Zip and Chris Chin. Are you going to share the screen at least? Am I going to see the screen? Is the screen not shared? No, not oh, at my bad. Zoom. Not at Zoom. Just looking at your nice little picture there. Oh, there we go. Big screen. Is that better? That's awesome, dude. Thank you so much. You're welcome, bro. I live to serve. So why aren't your camera on in Zoom? You just don't... Is it well, it, because if, if I use if I use Bandicam, I, I can't use two programs for the oh, same okay. camera. But maybe I can... Hang on a second. Maybe I can... Maybe I can trick this no, Don't shit. worry about it. No, that's okay. all right. Here, I'll just use my um, computer camera. We'll see. It won't let me do that either. Yeah, don't worry about it, dude. As long as it's working, I can go without seeing you. There's that dude right there, there dude, that singer. There's that stupid singer, dude. I should be him for Halloween. Where, who, where, what, who? This guy? Uh, yeah. Uh, don't click it. I'm not going to click it. Don't worry. Good. I don't want that. It's not going to be clicked at all. He says, people in the industry give me blank stares when I brush off $8 million deals because I'm not going to be who I am. <laughs> What was the song line? Tell me the song line again. I'm sick and tired of buying fat people FUD drowns or something like that. <laughs> people on welfare being 300 pounds and 5 foot 5. You shouldn't be getting FUD drowns on me. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Oh, wow. Oh, God, society. Such a shame. It's the Geek Zip Podcast. Ryan Zip coming at you from the Zip Cave. Christian is still at the Lewis Lake House up in New York State, and we are here for another adventure. Christian, how you doing up there, buddy? Oh, you got your video working. I do. I I, I told you, dude, dude, I live to serve, okay? I wasn't I, looking. I didn't, I'm surprised. Yeah. I wasn't looking at the screen. So awesome. as cool. as our, our loyal listeners and loyal viewers of our video feed know, we had some issues last week with the your video feed. My, totally my fault. Um, so, it wasn't the best picture anyway. No, it wasn't very good, and, and that's why I was like, eh, it's all right. We use the I got better l- better lighting this time. But it was a really good episode, and it's always enjoyable to talk. What, what, what have you been doing up there with the, with the lake? Have you been out on the lake? Are you yeah, doing any got, lake I activities? Yeah. I got my toes in it the other day. My sock got wet. It felt gross. So there's no like, there's no boats. There's no fishing. If you wanted to, you could. There's do that none of stuff. that stuff. There's kayaks and canoes. It's been pretty rough lately, but yeah, my my brother and his uh, daughter went and got in it up yeah. to their waists or so. Yeah, you d- you didn't want to join. No, it's it's kind of different yeah, since due to erosion. You can't get on the beach in front of our cottage anymore. It's not like a, a smooth, rocky beach. It's like a cliff. As dumb as that sounds. Yeah, it's more like a cliff. Like yeah. they got big blocks there to yeah, hold the yeah, shore yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to walk all the way down to the end of camp to get on into the water. So I'm like, how oh, far is like, that? I don't know, block and block and a half, maybe just a block. I don't know, dude. It's it's too far for me. I don't want to be walking around in my swim trunks and wet and cold after coming out of the lake. I, I see we still have a lot of work to do with you, brother. I guess. A lot of work. Um, it's nice when I used to be able to just walk out, go down, and get in the water. Well, that's because you were in shape. Well, you no, could, you could breathe okay. The beach. The beach. It's not <laughs> just the, the proximity of the beach to the house. So you're saying it's it used a, to be right up to the house, and now because of erosion, it is no longer that way. Yes, the beach is gone. There's just like big, huge stones now holding what's left of the shoreline up. Are they like jagged stones? You can't like step on them to get in the water or anything like that? No, they're big like stone cubes. Okay, but there might but, be uh, shit down in them. Is that, what, is, that, is, that, is that the kind of deal? They make it more like a, a, a more perilous to get into the water. They're ah. not a very good water entry, ah. like, you know. Walking in through like the sand or the the shallows. Do you guys not have a dock? 
Like a, oh, there's a dock in the lagoon. There's a dock in the, there's a dock in the lagoon, but it's a not. dock in the lagoon. You're gonna take some pictures of this place. I have no idea what it looks <laughs> like. Never been there. Um, I was a very loud kid, so uh, understandably, and we we've, we've talked about it. Christian never invited me up to the lake house uh, when we were younger because I was really loud and obnoxious as a kid. So, uh, I've never had the it's a pleasure. Christian camp. We, you can't, you can't even I, and I swore, podcast up right. There. Yeah. I swore a lot. So he's like, I'm not taking <laughs> fucking stuff up there. So, uh, anyway, what, what, well, what have you been doing this week? If you haven't, been you know, they like, used to have on their rules up here, dude, if it's printed out, no dancing. Oh, see, that's no good. Cause I dance everywhere I go. I'm, I don't know what happened. I wonder if Kevin Bacon came up here and showed him what's <laughs> up, dude. John Lithgow moved in. He's now a resident. He's preaching. Um, all right. Well, what have you been doing? I'm watching the Pirates movies. I'm, That's uh, what you told the, me. Pirates of the Caribbean the fourth films. one. I got one more to go, I think. I guess there's a new, I don't know if it's a documentary or a new special or whatever on Netflix about the uh, trial. Have you seen that? The depth? Oh, Johnny and Amber. Yeah. Johnny and Amber trial. I, I, I'm very excited. I was totally engrossed in that trial. I pretty much watched the whole thing. Yeah, it could um, be interesting. It's fascinating. So I'm very excited to watch that. What else? What else? So, but, so you watch? How, did oh, you watch all uh, the Pirate no, movies? Yeah, and Netflix has Pope's Exorcist. I watched that. I one. saw that last night. I know. I'm so excited. Um, I because uh, Kush and I. It was, a, I, it was a good Exorcist movie. I liked it. Yeah, I, no, I'd seen it on. Uh, I, maybe I went to the theater and saw it. I don't, I don't know, but I'd seen it, and it was it was oh, yeah. okay. It was okay. I like that. Sure. That kid was kind of funny, though. Yeah, uh, that demon voice. Yeah, I mean, it had its goofy <laughs> moments. I thought Russell Crowe, though. I mean, it's his best work in a while. Um, yeah. But anyway, no, I was um, me and I Kush, like the idea. The idea about like the church being behind the Inquisition for nefarious reasons. Oh yeah, I, I loved every in, in the insinuations in that film. I mean, even even like in the beginning where they're like grilling him about the exorcism with the. The one he did in South America, like in the beginning of the movie. When they where, shot that pig in the head. Dude. Yeah, and there's like, yeah, he locked out the psychiatrist from the room and shit. And it was, it's, like I said, it's a really good movie. I mean, you know, it's like, it, it, exorcism movies are hard to get, you know. I, I think that's why The Exorcist is so great, because it was the first one to even come close. And I'm not even sure if it got it. You know, but I mean, it's it's came the close closest to what you know, Catholics a are demon afraid possession of. movie. What what Catholics assume to be would be a possession. That's awesome. Uh, what else? What else? What else you been doing? Uh, started watching that Bly Haunting of Bly Manor. I'd never seen that, and that was that. Now a, that's that's Flanagan's lame duck, right? That, that's kind of no. The, I think I, I think that one's a little rated higher than that other one. That uh, Midnight, not Midnight Mass, but like that. Oh, Midnight Club. One yeah, where yeah, the yeah. With the kids. Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. For sure. Okay. Gotcha. But I just thought it'd be good to watch something spooky up here because I'm at yeah. A big, it's like a little camp. You're on a lake too. I mean, why, why didn't you? You should be watching Friday the Thirteenth, I would think. Well, the waves were good, so that's why I was watching Pirates. I was like, I could get out there on the lake, and there's <laughs> a lot of you know shipwrecks out there on Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. So uh, I've gotten Cush completely obsessed with Supernatural, as I knew would happen. Yeah. It happens anytime anybody watches it from the start. You can't help but get engrossed in it. Um, we wrapped up season two, which. For our Supernatural fans out there, that's the scene in which Sam dies, Dean makes the deal for the year, and then season three is them trying to get him out of the deal. We all know how that ends. I don't want to spoil it because Kush is watching it. I think that's one of the best seasons. That's usually where I start watching whenever I start a rewatch. On three? Yeah. I told her, see, me and you, man, see, I I told her last night, I said, this is really the season where they, they really get it right. You know, they, they they get like the formula, you know, and I mean, there's, there's the funny episodes and there's the, so yeah, I, I completely agree with you a hundred percent best season finale. I think I've seen in a show ever possibly, uh, was season three's finale. Um, I, I just was glued to the television. Now that could be because I'd been watching the whole season or what have you or whatever. Uh, I have played the multiplayer, the new Texas chainsaw massacre game, Christian that dropped, on Friday, um, that's cool. The multiplayer is it game. on Game Pass or it's on Game Pass for free uh, on cool. Xbox 
One X is what I play as. Dark Knight Zip is my gaming handle. Dark Knight. My brother's going to get a PlayStation 5 in September. Is that right? Yeah. He's, That's cool. He's going to play that Spider-Man Miles Morales. Yeah, well, the, you talk about Spider-Man 2? That's that's the know. exclusive one. Yeah, he's talking about Spider Man too. Um, that's that's awesome. I really want. I, I think he's he said he wanted me to tell you he played Gotham Knights. Um. It, it's all right. I mean, like I said, it gets monotonous after a while. I mean, you become like it's kind of like Red Dead Redemption, right? It's like yeah. <laughs> you get tired of just building the house and doing the farm shit. You miss the adventures. I've been um, trying a lot of old games that I have yeah. on Steam that I haven't played before. Well, let me let me talk about Texas Chainsaw Massacre first. All right, I was just right. talking about games. You got me in the games. <laughs> um, so wanted, the big I beef. To play some games. I, I don't know if you know this or not, but the big beef with this new Texas Chainsaw game is people are saying that it's not scary enough. Now I don't know <laughs> what you can do. I mean, you're not going to scare me in a game. First of all, they um, probably mean they want it darker. There's too much. It's too light. <laughs> Again, it, it's it's very, very, very similar to uh, Dead by Daylight. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's there's four players. I've only seen up to three members of the killers, the family, um, yeah. after you at a time. I don't know if it has the ability to do four or if three is the max. I think it's three. I think it's three. Yeah, because I have you I've, been. Have you been on the killing side? I haven't been on the killing side yet. It's I, I always I always do uh, quick match and just continue, and it just always puts me with the victims. Um, uh, I guess I'll have sucks, to actually. You know, I, I want to hear what it's like. I know. Killing. Well, you know, I if it's anything like Dead by Daylight, the advantage is is that um, the killer is first person and you are third person. That's the advantage. It seems to be like that. The killers seem to have that kind of view to where they can't really see on their bottom right, bottom left corners as well um, as the actual but there's, victims. But there's more than one of them. There's more than there's one, more of, than them, one of them, and the property is massive. <laughs> I think they're kind of combining the properties from the remake and the original film <laughs> because the underground yeah, is there, part is there, of the Is there only one... Is it only one level, or is there? Well, I'll levels? tell you. Now, I've only done probably in all. I say I did probably fifteen rounds yesterday. Com- you know, uh, you know, compiling the day, and um, the ones that I did, I was only at the house. You you wake up, you're hanging upside down in the house basement, and you know, sound is the thing. So so anything you do makes sound. So you have to do it slowly. Right, I mean, yeah, yeah, just like Dead by Daylight, right? And um, so you wiggle your way off the hook or whatever. You're not hooked, uh, supposedly, but you're already wounded, right? So that that's that's part of the challenge of the game is that you're already taking fucking blood, right? I just killed a wasp or something. I was gonna say uh, you seem to be totally uh, focused on something else, so uh, maybe I should pause. Did you get it? I got it. All I right, got good, it. We're good. good yeah, good. I heard what you were saying. Right. Talking about how it's dead by daylight. Yeah, like yeah. And daylight. and so there are, you know, cracks in the wall that only you can wiggle through. The killers cannot. That's how you can easily outrun them. And they have to slash you several times versus the Friday the thirteenth or the dead by daylight where, you know, once they grab you, that's it, you're dead. So there's actually mm-hmm. A little bit of strategy involved because you could get away, heal yourself, and keep going. I have not escaped the fucking house yet. I got close last night. I was outside. I was by the back gate. And here come. There's a couple characters from the family that I've never heard. Cassie and Johnny. I don't know where these. I guess they made these characters up for the game. I don't know. But anyway, um, that so was really more fun. Bad guys. There's yeah, more they're, bad they're members guys of the family. Three. Right. Cool. Well, right. So you got gra- Grandpa. Is like this weird Orion type character. Like during the during the match, it'll be like Grandpa has awoken. Don't move. Yeah, you like give him blood or something. The the killers have to give him blood to like make him stronger and level him up so he hears more and more and knows where we are. And it works with outlines a lot of the ways that Dead by Daylight did. Um, yeah. You know, but it's a fun game. I'd recommend it. Uh, d- definitely cool. And then I told you we were watching Supernatural. All right, we're running late. We need to get into the show. Uh, first of all, don't forget, support the show any way you can. Go to our Patreon account, 
forward slash GeekZip Podcast for exclusive content. This week, we're going to be dropping our unboxing video of Mumra, the Super 7 Premium Action Figure that I have not released yet, but recorded for some reason. Didn't release it. Did also, you Potomatic yet? Yes, I was I was just thank you, Christian. I was just getting ready to say podomatic.com, P O D O M A T I C dot com forward slash geekzip podcast is our podcast homepage where you can find our social media links, our fundraising links, and everything related to the show. Uh, we always welcome any kind of support we can get. Our email address is geekzippodcast at gmail.com, and we are currently working on a website. Did I cover everything, Christian? Yeah, and like, share, subscribe, comment, you know the drill. If you're on the they internet, know how it that's works. what they all say. That's what they all say, baby. All right, let's do it. First of all, uh, we did have one passing uh, last week. I did want to mention, because I actually watched several episodes of his show, Christian, as you know, I'm a, uh, I am a journalist and a journalism yeah. fan. So anytime. He, sound, he sounded influential. Very. Uh, I, I, I would compare him. In, okay, we're talking about Michael Parkinson, the UK talk show host uh, who had a famous show in the 70s, early 80s, where he interviewed a number of stars. Uh, it was on the BBC um, but he was English and it was, it was, you know, in Europe, it was called Parkinson was the name of the show. And he did it for a, uh, 1971 to 1982 and just hosted anybody and everybody that like, like the famous picture of Mel Gibson in the pink shirt, you know, the meme of that, you know, that's from mm-hmm. Parkinson's show. It also um, says he hosted it again from 1998. They tried to do it again when, yeah, yeah, they did it again, but it didn't really have as much as that, you know, first incarnation. Like, like there's there's huh. clips and stuff of that first show on Facebook that I watched. It's fascinating, and he was a great he was a great um, 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 interview. Uh, so uh, just a legendary talk show host over in the UK. All our condolences. 88 Michael Parkinson passing away. Uh, our condolences to his family, fans, and everybody that watched the show. Christian, you were actually the one to break this news to me, but you didn't share it to the goddamn Facebook page for some reason. You shared it to your personal page. Remind Sorry, me to kick your ass when you get home. Well, you were uh, the one covering Comic-Con. <laughs> <laughs> Always pawning it off. I love it. Uh, we made the cover of Rolling Stone. Well, kind of. I don't know if the cover... <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny but I'm just on the kidding. cover of it. I'm just kidding. We made Rolling Stone's website in the form of a story regarding the collaboration between Slipknot's Corey Taylor and the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants's Tom Kenny when they joined on band. stage Saturday night, yes, in his band. When they joined on stage Saturday night during the Huntington Comic and Toy Convention to sing the SpongeBob SquarePants theme song of Clip, which has now almost gone viral across the internet. Um, just really cool to be mentioned in Rolling Stone. I just thought, I'd, you know, I think that's a big news. Uh, I don't know yeah, how often I, we're mentioned it's, it's, in Rolling Stone It's magazine. good to get the Huntington Comic and Toy Convention news out there, you know? Yes, yeah. that too. That too. And, uh, you know, obviously I... <sighs> Maybe it's, it time. Maybe it's about, time to renew the Rolling Stone subscription. I, it talked I about it. Corey Taylor uh, going on his solo tour and how in, on his acoustic sets, apparently he gets requested to play the SpongeBob song. Is that right? Which I guess he, yeah, apparently he learned it to sing with his kid or kids. And apparently it's one of his most requested songs at his acoustic set. So he was really excited to actually get to perform with the real SpongeBob and everybody. It's really awesome, and you know, newfound respect for Corey. Obviously, something he didn't have to do, um, did purely out of the fun of it, and the fact that he was with Tom Kenny. Um, who knows if that was planned the whole time? I, if, it, if it were me, I would have planned it the whole time. But um, <laughs> you know, it was still really a cool moment. And if you have a Rolling Stone subscription, you can read the story. But we do have the link to the story on our Facebook page if you want to check out more info. Man, Disney is just having a <sighs> shitty, shitty year. Um, they now face a costly it. lawsuit from their financing arm, TSG. Now, this is formerly 20th Century Fox, Christian. Um, they p- kind of became Disney's financial backing arm when uh, Disney bought the property or something Yeah, like it that. says they invested billions or billions. something. And 
TSG Entertainment is accusing Disney of using, quote, every trick in the Hollywood accounting playbook to short them hundreds of millions of dollars in connection with the investments made. And they made investments yeah. in films like Avatar, Way of the Water, and the new Little Mermaid film that just came out. Uh, the Disney well, that's, the live that's action. why they say, you know, don't mess with the mouse, dude. Man, it's just it's just money after money after money for Disney. They just have they're just forking over millions of dollars by the day. Um, and they got the lawyer. They can pay for the lawyers. Speaking of lawyers, uh, let's talk about this story. And I know it's not really comic book or geek related. Oh boy! But uh, it was just something that was kind of crazy. Entertainment news. That was a movie, dude. That's right. a big movie. Oscar winner. I've never seen it. Didn't even want to see it. I was like, eh, I don't want to see that shit. No, that's uh, a, because you dude, know, it's so cheesy. That's not how life Sandra works, Bullock, dude, you know. Gosh, and sure enough, so I'm bad. right. That's not how life works. They were his conservators. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, I never bought into that lie. I didn't buy it, and it was <laughs> bullshit. No, I've. <laughs> I called it from the beginning. <laughs> the, the bullshit side is what it should have been called. Um, he hit look, us on the blind side. Look, dude. here's the deal. Uh, you know, whatever happened in real life w- with those fucking people, I really could give a shit less. I'm happy the kid got a chance to, you know, be more than he would have been in our fucked up system. Dude, you know? dude, did you see he was, he one of the reasons he was like suing him or mad about it was because, uh, they made him look stupid in the movie, and he said that affected his future like job prospects because people saw that and were like, "I ain't hired." Come on, ass. see, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's like if you have any blame in this situation for anybody that worked on that film, you're completely and utterly wrong. Well, no, they're not mad at people about the film. He's like, "Oh no, the they're saying now. that that Sandra Bullock should should." you know, give her Oscar back for it. Oh, well, sure. I mean, whatever. Are you kidding me? No, it's I like, mean, of course people are going to say stupid stuff like that. That's, that's what that's I'm talking what this about. Articles about that's what, I, that's not what this article about. This is, this is the news article that sparked all the bullshit. Now they're all saying like, like they're blaming the film. Like, 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 like the film is in some way related to the reality and influencing it somehow. No, it was a movie about, what was reported the reality of this kid's life. And, you know, I just, again, I, I don't know why I felt compelled to share it. Um, you know, because it was just so fucking weird. And, you know, like you said, if he said that shit, he's clearly after a fucking paycheck um, or whatever. I don't know what the fuck. He, I mean, he's, wasn't he a professional football player, for Christ's sake? That's I mean, what the article said, yeah. You can't fucking... Aff- anyway, whatever. I mean, and if the, if the family did him wrong, that's fucked up too. But again, it's not really anything we cover. But uh, I just thought it was interesting to cover it because, you know, of the whole I just pop it was culture funny. thing. Yeah. Go ahead. You thought it was funny? I just thought it was funny. I was like, yeah. oh, man, that's terrible. God. It is terrible. It is terrible. You're right. All right, let's let's uh, let's take care of our strike headlines from the past week. Yes, unfortunately, the Hollywood strike between the WGA and the AMPTP continues. However, uh, this past Friday, the CEOs of major studios, inclu- including uh, David Zosloff and Donna Langley of NBC Universe- Universal, um, Disney was in the house, and there were a lot of heavy executives that were supposedly supposed to to have a call this past Friday, Christian, to discuss yep. a path forward to ending the strike. Now, as we record here on Saturday the uh, 19th, no news came from Friday about the strike ending or any kind of negotiation deals or what have you. But um, it's now 108 days um, yesterday. So, uh, or <laughs> no, that's not right. It's 108 days since uh, 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 August 17th, which was a uh, day before yesterday. So again, it's just so this nonsense continues. It's it's cost uh, hundreds and thousands of people at this point. It's affected them, I would think. Um, whether you're a fan of film or whether you work there, um, you know the big thing that came from the strike that I thought was interesting to comment on was the Tron 3 
director. Um, uh, God, I have such a hard time saying his name. Joachim Johan Ronning. Ronning. Johan Ronning. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I have no idea. It, it's got the O with the cross through it, which indicates a German name, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe Swedish. I don't know. Nordish. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, he He's went on Viking, Instagram. Dude. I don't know. <laughs> he could be. I don't know. Uh, he went on his Instagram and said this. I'll quote it directly. Today was supposed to be our first day of principal photography on Tron Ares. This is the third film in the Tron franchise from Disney. A movie subsequently about AI and what it means and takes to be human. Instead, we are shut down with over 150 people laid off. It's indefinite, which makes it exponentially harder for everyone. Um, it does that. It does. He goes he on to, to say the AMPTP. Yeah, go ahead. He's going to say, usually they can get these deals done all the time, but now all of a sudden we can't get a deal made. This is Hollywood. We close deals for breakfast is his direct quote. Now, suddenly all the time in the world to save this thing that is again, like he said, a very important moneymaker for America. Right. I mean, I mean, th- this is a major export. If we're being honest, you know, now the studios probably get a lot of it, but I mean, you know, they employ a lot of people, right? And and so, yes, the more time that goes on, just the more nonsense this becomes and, you know, looking bad on both sides and you start understanding why you have proponents on both sides because, you know, I'm all for standing up for fairness and stuff like that, but if you're just being stone and not uh, again, I don't. I don't know Just anything about these no negotiations. Just starving them out, making wait until they're desperate to make a deal, dude. That's what it seems like, you know. It does seem that way, but it could also be from the from the point of view as you know, we've gone to them with several things to throw on the table, and they don't even want to talk about it. Sure, don't know because it's it's uh, they know they're fake deals, right? <laughs> they right. know they're not. You're right. Deal. No, I'm saying it's th- bad faith negotiation. But it kicks the can down the road and just delays the process longer. And I think that's what the this Joaquin guy was was saying is, sure. is that you know we're, we're we're fucking around with something that we should have gotten resolved weeks ago um, for pennies probably. And um, the good news is is that at least they're talking. I don't know. I mean, at least they're talking to each other. That's that's good. All right. You got any more comments on the strike, Christian? No. Lita, Leto is going to stare, play as Ares. Yes. Uh, this is the third film in the Tron franchise after Tron Legacy with uh, Jeff Bridges and um, Jared Leto was set to star in the new film. He's going to be a program that becomes sentient in our world, dude. That's crazy. Wow. It sounds like Westworld. So um, one thing that it seemed the strike may not have affected was... You it- don't have that story on there, dude, about the Little Mermaid producer sued over special effects artist Onset injury. What happened to the special effects artist, dude? How did they get injured? What the hell are you talking about? Don't click on it. That's just a ridiculous story. Oh. But more di- more trouble for Disney, right? Jesus. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's like Disney's got a target on their back. I wonder why. Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't trying to say it directly, but yeah, that's that's pretty much probably why. Um, anyway, as I was saying, before the strike, or, or after the strike, one of the things that seemed to not be affected, luckily, was like indie projects. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the screen, Act- the screen actors guild and the AFTRA kind of uh, would allow people to work on independent projects that were not majorly backed by a major company. Well, Monday they announced, this is last Monday, not, not yesterday, but the day before or the week before they announced that they're no longer going to be doing that, that now they're now protesting all filming of anything, period. Apparently um, there's some backlash about their agree to do just some, you know, they're like, that's right. undermining the strike's impact. We can't just, we got, it's gotta be all or nothing. Right. And, and you know, I mean, it's, it, it's a union tactic. It, it makes sense. You know, you shut everything down. You can't just shut some of it down. 
Sure. Um, so, you know, again, I just pray to God that this whole strike shit is over soon so we can move on and talk about better things like Blue Beetle. It came out last week, Ken Christian. Did you, I'm sure you haven't seen it. I have not yet seen it either. Uh, no. It opened with $3.3 million in previews. Now, just to give you an yeah, idea. Yeah, Thursday night shows, you mean. Correct. Just to give you an idea um, of where that stands, Shazam 2 had $3.4 million in previews, so about 100000 more than Blue Beetle. And The yeah. Flash had $9.7 million in previews. So that kind of will tell you where it stands. It is on the low end. Well, um, we'll see what happens. Word of mouth, yeah. could, you know, if it's a good movie like this. Well, and, that, and, and you just said it. People are saying that it is a really good movie. It's a good start. It's exactly where DC needs to kind of jump off from. Um, you know, hopefully they're right. I really want DC and Peter and James and everybody to write this ship because time's a wasting and, uh, you know, we're losing precious time by the day. And especially with all this, uh, this, uh, strike bullshit on top of it. So go see blue beetle. I will definitely go see it. Um, it opened last weekend theaters everywhere. Check your local listings to check that out. Christian, did you see what Aaron Taylor Johnson said in this interview? Oh, this is going to make you mad, dude. He's like joining Batista's club or something. The he's, he's in the Batista club. You're right, bitching about everything. <laughs> oh, he just doesn't God. care, dude. He don't care if you bitch about him either. I mean, at the end of the day, he's got a point. He, I mean, what, what, do, what do we matter in the life of Aaron Taylor Johnson? Very little. But, you know, if I were him, too, I wouldn't care about that Avenger role. That was such a terrible quick silver. That I'll agree with him on. <laughs> yeah, that, that I'll be – if he said just that, I'd be like, okay. You know, <laughs> okay, yeah, they fucked him. So I don't blame him for not liking that one. But he mentioned but he that – said it was kick-ass and Godzilla. Godzilla. And, like, like the movies that got him, Craven the Hunter, which is going to be his biggest payday of all time – and he shits on him. Just makes no sense. And yeah, you're right. It is a fucking Batista move. <laughs> and he uh, he Batista talks about he won't, give a, he won't give a straight answer about being Bond or not either, dude. He's just like, well, you know, I'm probably I'm trying working. to get his fucking price tag up. That's probably what working he's doing on there. Craven now. I don't yeah, want Craven's Bond. what it's all about. Two years. Blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't care about it anyway, dude. You a know? year from now, when it falls on its ass, he'll be like, I didn't really like that either. <laughs> these fucking uh, actors dude i swear i just don't get them man they make the, they make they make this amount of money dude don't shit uh, don't shit where you eat i mean it, it's classic time fucking his family saying. dude oh fuck Still, you. see again fuck you yeah. you know you don't have to excuses. call these films out by name you know and excuses, say this is excuses from him no, yeah, from him. Okay, about being a jerk and yeah. everything, and saying Thank my family, you. I don't care. Um, there's more important things in my big films. That's right. Bullshit. <laughs> Money for your family is what's important. Oh, here we go. All right, yes, Christian, we are very excited because we have a new image. The first image, it's not a very good image, but it's an it image looks like a wizard, dude. <laughs> <laughs> talk about it hang on it's peter dinklage in the toxic avenger remake so excited about this christian did you ever see the original toxic avenger yeah i don't remember much about it just i mean it was, it, it was a goofy fucking kind of uh, i wouldn't even trauma call it films movie. yeah yeah trauma you know and their fucked upness i got a trauma thing on my wall so i can always get inspiration from it but um i am super excited about this remake because the Toxic Avenger was one of those things that wasn't supposed to work. It was supposed to be a fucking total waste of time. Shit rag, you know, wouldn't wipe your boots on it. And it turned into a cult classic. And that just rarely happens. So I'm really excited to see it. But the image... <laughs> I mean, you can definitely see the Toxie uh, on his face, on his head. He's got like the curled down ears... Clearly, he's got a bald head. Can you see it okay, Christian? Yeah, I can, I'm looking closer. All right. Closely looking. Um, one thing I do know, as Christian mentioned, he does look like a wizard because his mop, I assume it's his mop, is glowing green on one 
<laughs> I don't know if I like that. I like the idea of him having the mop. I thought that was fucking hilarious, right? Um, I know the mop had power or whatever, but I mean, you know, it was the idea that that at normal times it looked like a mop, right? Dude, he's going to ride around on it like a broom. <laughs> It does. He looks like it's, a it's fucked up spew, Gandalf. Spew toxic clouds, dude. <laughs> looks like Gandalf. Oh man, Gandalf burned by the Balrog or something, dude. Yeah. Uh, is, is it just me, or does he have like purple veiny parts on his body? Right. It does look like a little glowing. Uh, glowing, there maybe or radioactiveness or something like there you that. Go. Toxic, dude. It's toxic. <laughs> it's, a, it's a toxic Avenger. Um, yeah, no. It, it again, just from a first image point of view, the fact that it kind of looks gritty and and shitty, I like. I think that's moving in the right direction. So we'll keep our eyes out for more images of Peter and the new Toxic Avenger remake and the news. All right, let's get into Deadpool three rumors. Because <laughs> they're apparently who's going. Who's up this week? I was going to say apparently they're going back and getting every actor that ever acted in the 20th Century Fox films for Marvel and trying to get them in this movie. Um, yeah, they're going to get the guys from those old ones you used to watch, like that Captain America <laughs> with him on the motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. What guy? Red Brown was his name. He's st- he's still around. <laughs> he does cons and shit. I've I've seen him do he's, uh, out west though, so I never get a chance to to catch him anywhere. But uh, God, that'd be funny. Um, nobody would get it but me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Reynolds would get it, dude. He'd be cracking up. I hope so. And then maybe he'd cast me, and I'd get rich and famous. If you recall what me and Christian are talking about in Logan. Daphne Keen, who played Laura, uh, also known as X-23 by all us comic fans, is rumored to show up in the Deadpool 3 film. Now, not just Daphne is rumored to show up, but also Julian McMahon's Doctor Doom from the 2000 Fantastic Four film. The guy that was a Nip Tuck. Yes, the Nip Tuck guy who played pretty much the closest thing to Dr. Doom a live action that we've gotten that's worth yeah, a shit. he's pretty good. Wasn't because that remake was fucking terrible, if we all remember that. Yeah, he was slick, though. He was slick. Uh, and, uh, again, and I think we've talked about this probably several times. Dr. Doom is probably my favorite MCU villain because of his complexity. He is not just some, you know, killer robot like Ultron or some mad god like Thanos. He is the leader of a sovereign nation who <laughs> thinks what he's doing is protecting his people. Which or is why he teams up with somewhere. a lot of heroes a lot. Because, again, he's not even really considered a villain, even though he's the best villain in the MC, in, in the Marvel Comics world. I mean, he's he's one of the most powerful villains for sure. So again, uh, I'm always happy to see Doctor Doom on screen. Hugh Jackman has come forward and says that his Wolverine in Deadpool three will be quote even angrier than his other version. Christian, what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, somebody apparently asked him like, is he going to be yeah. a nicer, or a grumpier, angrier Wolverine? Has he like, found no, peace? He's gonna... Has yeah, Wolverine he's found be a peace nice yet? <laughs> meditation dude it's that logan that's you know hung up his claws ripped out his own claws oh man uh we'll have to wait and see deadpool 3 is coming our way hopefully uh a whole soon. year away or something dude like i know it's a, it's, it's a it was a like a year from yesterday i think or some crazy shit but i mean hopefully we uh we get to see it eventually if we I'm ever fine. get through this strike um, if we make it, we don't die. <laughs> all right, let's get over into wrestling news, Christian. Now, did you watch yeah. SmackDown last night? Did you watch the, the Edges no. and Sheamus's match? I did not either. Um, and apparently, they never had a match before. That was cool. I did not know that. That that was I I I, I heard that too and didn't know that prior. So that is that is cool. Um, so here's what's happening for wrestling fans: WWE Edge, Adam Copeland. His current contract with the WWE, he had one more scheduled match, and that was the match that took place on SmackDown Friday night. Now, the internet was a buzz all last week with these rumors that this was going to be Edge's retirement. We know yeah. that it's been going that way, even with the miracle they performed on his broken fucking neck. 
he knew he didn't have you know dozens of years left in the wrestling business he had a few that he could go in wrap up his career with some dignity accept his praise as a hall of famer go out on his own terms exactly go thank you go out on his own terms and again all last week so i i think it's a work that's what I, th- I I think he's still got a couple years, frankly, because Apparently here's the he, thing. he gave a little message saying like, thanks to everybody, but it didn't sound like a retirement speech. It I think did. He also mentioned like he didn't know what was in the future. Exactly. So you saying that, right? Because I didn't, I didn't see it. So I don't know, but you saying that mixed with the videos that WWE was putting out last week, like they debuted his, his, um, his, um, uh, authentic, edge version of the intercontinental championship and let him yeah. see it and hold it and pick it up. Ooh, ah, uh, th- it's a work. They're working it. He's going to come back at WrestleMania 40. I guarantee it against somebody. Um, now let's say edge leaves the WWE. There's one place he could go where a best friend of his works. Um, Oh yeah, I forgot Christian was. What do you think about Edge and Christian versus FTR Christian? That'd be cool. Nuts, right? Crazy to think about. We wish against the dude. They could be against the Hardys again. Wow, that's something. (laughs) And then you could even you could even get the Dudleys in there if you really wanted to. You know, because they're uh, can pay for it, right? Yeah, Impact, right? Yeah. So so uh, interesting. A lot of possibilities. Look, here's the deal. Edge is an icon, Hall of Famer. He was very influential to me and Christian as we were coming up watching wrestling. All the stuff he did really with it, with Christian more. Um, the brood. N- not you, but Christian the wrestler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the brood and all that shit. So we wish uh, Edge all the best, and we're going to watch him wherever he ends up. And, and I mean, he's got an, an, uh, an, an unbelievable persona, you know, where he could go do anything. He could be a commentator. He could be an actor. He could be whatever he wants to be. Um, so it's not like, uh, I don't know, the great Kali, you know, going out there in the world after he retires. I'd, I'd kind of worry about what he's going to do, but not Edge. Ed, yeah. Edge is a this, great. There's a, there's a big difference between this is the last match on my current contract and this is my last match. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, there's just, there's you know, I, I think the smart wrestler will realize that, um, you know, it's probably a work. All right. <laughs> I did see this. Did you I mean, see this? Did you live, watch this live? I okay. No. I'm who, in camp. I don't. Do have we really know who Leatherface is? I, no. I never found out who Leatherface was because uh, that was I a great look kick. It up either. Yeah, it was a good. Uh, kick. It was I a was really like, good dang. kick. Yeah. Uh, Leatherface showed up on like AEW the big guy Dynamite. Overalls too, dude. Those overalls are really funny. Who the on. fuck is that? That's like Sanjay, not Sanjay, but like San Singh or something. I don't. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. He's their big giant. AEW's big giant. So I guess there was a, uh, to promote the video game. Apparently they got paid a hundred thousand dollars, maybe more than that, according to Dave Meltzer or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Leatherface. For this tie in promotional thing, which, you know, I'd seen the advertisements for it, right? I I'd seen the stuff for it throughout the, the, um, throughout the week arena and leading up to it. Yeah. Like ads on Facebook and all that shit, but it was Jeff or Jeff Hart. No, it was yes. Jeff Hardy. <laughs> Jeff Hardy versus Jeff Jarrett for a uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre death match. I don't I guess that's a death match with Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the front of it. But they had a leather face come out and waving a chainsaw. I I, I would hope dude. I He's would hope there's no the chain on the saw. <laughs> <laughs> but and then apparently you know, there, there was a title belt too. That was maybe like it was John Texas. Moxley, and he did kick him, and that, that's why the kick was so good. And he did have a chain on the saw, and he really did have a real chainsaw. Who knows? What were you saying? Be, uh, they also have like a Texas chainsaw belt that was like a title belt. Oh with yeah, their face on it. Oh sweet! Look at this kick. I like. He's mm. good. That's clear. They that's need clearly to sign, a wrestler. Sign Leatherface, dude. Clearly a wrestler. Sign Leatherface. I Give him see. a contract. <laughs> Coming over the top of the chainsaw. All right. Anyway, that was pretty cool. But um, not so good news for Tammy Sitch, a.k.a. Sonny, as she faces up to 25 years in prison for a fatal DUI case. And uh, Don't drink and drive, folks. I don't know. She's <laughs> Tammy Sitch. Yeah, you do know. Don't do that. Yeah, I, 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 kind, of, I kind of assume that, but. 
Uh, maybe that's just me. All right. Uh, here's your CM Punk drama more, for the uh, for the week. Um, more steam, steam stunk. CM punk. punk. <laughs> you say CM stunk? CM skunk. Maybe that's a better one, dude. The skunk. The CM skunk. CM Punk cannot seem to stay out of people's faces as he got into it last week with. Uh, Ryan Namath. Now, if you don't know who Ryan Namath is, that's fine. Nobody does because he's not a big star. Uh, but he is Dolph Ziggler's brother. Just, just to, just for those who may not know, to give you I some reference. I didn't know. I had to ask. So um, I did not know. It's hard to say if that. Like, I don't know if they worked with each other, Dolph and CM Punk in WWE. I, I, I don't remember. So I, I don't. I, I'm not saying that's why they got into it. I, I think they got there into could it because. Be. Ryan be Nemeth had put there, out a tweet you know? at some point that said something about CM Punk being soft. Or Social some media shit. drama, dude. It, it became real, and he got in his face and said, "You gonna don't you post that bad word about me?" The thing about CM Punk is, I don't know what he wants his end game to be here. Like, like I he don't won't. know what I. I think he's trying to get them to buy his contract out. I really do. Huh. Um, because I don't think he wants to be there. I don't think he wants to be in wrestling. I don't think he enjoys it. I think he enjoys coming out in Chicago every 10 years and getting that amazing pop. But I mean, if you even watch his matches, it's just not like it was. It's not like, and I know he's got a lot of health problems and he's dealing with a lot of injuries over the past few years, but you cannot deny that when he fucking does that, go to sleep. It is not like it used to be. That move used to just, I mean, he did that like butter. Now, I mean, he barely gets him up on his fucking shoulders. I haven't seen it in a while. Watching. I'm telling you, you can tell. And you're just like, man, just, he's just not there, man, you know? And, and, and I'm not saying he's a bad worker, and I'm not saying he's not a hard worker. I'm just saying it's a difference from the CM Punk I see nowadays Versus the CM Punk I saw on his way out in the WWE with the with the pipe bomb and all that shit. That's what I'm saying. Well, why don't you say they would be similar though? Because that was when he also wanted out at WWE. Maybe. I mean, yes, I would certainly say it was similar for sure. Uh, but again, but even at that point, his matches are what I'm saying. Like, like his matches in WWE were flawless, right? And his impact was good and his motions were good. And the way that he, um, you know, took bumps was good. He yelled at somebody because he got chopped. I mean, come on, man. If you're not willing to get chopped, then you're not, and you don't like wrestling anymore because I'm telling you, I go to those indie shows and that's all they do is chop each other. It's hilarious, uh, to see who can take whose chop. Right. Um, you know, and, and again, uh, I, don't know. I hadn't heard about that. Yeah, yeah, he he, he uh, 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 after Collision went off the air, he went at, when he was doing that promo on Page. Uh I don't know who whoever he was facing that night, he said he was pissed off that they that they chopped him and he said not to. Great. Come on, bro. Give me a fucking break. It's wrestling. Going into I mean, business for yourself, dude. I said no chops. That's it. Yeah, I mean, so you know, the CM Punk drama continues. More drama. Sadly, for AEW's Cash Wheeler, one half of FTR, as he was picked up for aggravated assault with a firearm. Yeah, um, like road rage. This happened in Orlando, Florida last week, and he appeared in circuit court to, um, you know, face his charges. And He's he, cooperating, he's yeah. He's cooperating. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't know what happened, but. He's on the lamb, dude. He's hiding. He's, high and he's in hiding. <laughs> <laughs> he's pleaded not guilty to the charge, and uh, it is considered a third-degree felony in the state of Florida. Um, if found guilty, uh, what does he face? He's got to turn over all his firearms. Yeah. One thing. <sighs> but anyway, he's being cooperative and nice, and so there's no reason to think there's going to be any problems. Brock Lesnar is uh, slowly kind of fading out of WWE, and they're keeping it closely guarded where and when he will appear. Um, the rumors now are that we probably won't see him again until Royal Rumble WrestleMania 40 time. This kind of Christian well, yeah. is, I, I bring this up, Christian, because this goes to what you were saying about him being um, the heavy draw for WWE and that they should use him more. 
Um, so I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on it. Well, I don't know. I was going to say, I think it's good that they use them. You know, they don't want to give it all away. It's good to like Chris Tucker, you know? Sure. Sure. Just um, appear and every now and then. So he stays pretty hot. Sure. So sure. And I mean, Lesnar just got out of a great program with Cody Rhodes for SummerSlam and you know, it, it took raw for several months to help their ratings, but I mean, um, unless they had somebody that could face Lesnar in a weekly competition, you know, but there's just not enough people out there. Like Gunther might be a good program, but he's not, Lesnar he's not makes it. Ma- Lesnar makes every Lesnar makes everybody else look weak. Right, right. We'll keep you updated on what Brock's doing and what he plans to do while he's out. Speaking of out, Lacey Evans uh, apparently has parted ways with the WWE. Um, Can you they, blame her? No. <laughs> one bit um and neither neither can dave Meltzer from the wrestling observer as he chimes in that you know when she was called up from nxt and she's beautiful and talented and great on the mic i don't know what the fuck happened she got this huge massive push i remember it she was they they had her against charlotte remember it was southern bell dude yeah that whole bullshit with with, uh, rick and all that shit and then and then they even gave her good entrance music (laughs) yeah and then it's like nothing nothing um so she is no longer with the wwe she is which um, they said might have been due to vince getting out you know because vince was behind her vince was a fan yeah and he was part of the push which you know she could have been an unfortunate victim but i don't blame her for walking yeah. Um, oh, also the storyline they did give her and everything is just kind of pitiful. Yeah, the whole fucking army thing, and then you got slaughter in your fucking ear too. In addition to that, giving you shit about it, and you're like, I didn't like, do this, you know? Hooking up with Ric Flair or something wasn't that one of her? That was that too? was the last big kind of before the the army thing that she's doing now. Yeah, but the that's just that, a terrible, terrible, which is thing. terrible too, right? So they're both terrible I mean, angle. You're coming off two terrible angles, right? And then you're going in, or you're coming off one terrible angle going into another one. I don't fucking blame her. Um, she is now going by the name, um, God damn it, Macy Australia. I guess I don't know if that's a real name or not. Um, but we wish her all the best. And yeah, she does deserve better booking. Good, good for her. She shouldn't sit there and get pissed on. Yeah, go find something else to do. Better Ahsoka to do. is getting ready to drop Christian. Comes out mm-hmm. um, Tuesday. What, tonight, right? Tuesday at 6. Yeah, it comes out tonight. So uh, it actually was originally supposed to be released on Wednesdays and has now been pushed back to being released every Tuesday night. So I guess it would be coming out mind. at midnight on Wednesday. I assume. I assume. That was when it used to come out, but now it's going to come out at 6 on Tuesday. It's an interesting right. strategy. Right, right, right. Um, I don't know. They're, they're probably thinking they're going to be competing against something, but I don't know what that is. You know, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what the lineup is for streaming and how that works, but I know that's what you know shows used to do. Would they, they would adjust the dates they aired based off what was showing. Uh, on sure. television, so I don't, I don't know. But anyway, um, the initial reactions from Ahsoka praise it as being epic, highlight the music, say it's just an incredible series and a step up for the Star Wars franchise. Makes me happy. Um, as you mentioned, Christian, it but it does make me want to go back and watch the animated stuff to kind of catch up on Ahsoka's character and, and kind of her. And, and who this, these other two characters, yeah. Sabine Wren and, uh, yeah, yeah, Hera. yeah. And, and, and exactly get more of a background on the secondary characters from the Ahsoka storyline. Cause it is almost, some people said it was almost like rebels live action or something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard that too. Um, in other Star Wars news, Obi Wan Kenobi director Deborah Chow revealed Deborah Chow was the chick from the films that ended up directing a couple of the episodes. Uh, she has revealed Ewan McGregor pitched several ideas for potential second season story plots for the Obi Wan Kenobi series. Um, so as much as we think it's over, it's like, and I don't even know. If- <laughs> This could it's just funny be. to think of him coming up with ideas for it. Like, you know what else we could do? Yeah. If I was a Jedi, I could go to space <laughs> and I could fight this thing. We have to get this object that will save the Force and save uh, Leia. And then we have a lightsaber fight. Oh, it's going to be awesome. We got to do season two. I promise you. 
Uh, sadly, you're probably not far off. <laughs> but that's cool. He's thinking about it like that. You know? It is cool. Yeah. I mean, it, it's cool that he didn't just shut it off, you know, right when the season ended, that he actually had some enthusiasm for the character, as he should. It's yeah. probably his most popular fucking Unlike the Batista role. Club, dude. Yeah, unlike Batista and fucking Aaron Taylor Johnson over here bitching. <laughs> Uh, the bitch club of the month. Um, Zack Snyder has told us that the Rebel Moon trailer is most likely going to release during today's Gamescom event over in uh, Cologne, Germany. Um, so that's that'll be cool. I've been wanting to see the trailer for this. I still have no idea what it's about. Um, so hopefully that, that answers some of the questions anyway. Um, the article kind of mentioned some stuff. It talked about that Sophia Butella having to make a... Yeah, people to fight some people. Yeah, but I mean, again, very little, uh, <laughs> not enough to go. Oh, okay, that's what it's about. Um, yeah. it was, you know, the synopsis I saw was very broad. Um, so again, we'll drop that trailer on our Facebook and let you guys know as soon as we see it and make sure. It, I'm sorry if I'm moving fast, but it's because we're kind of running a little bit late. Godzilla is coming back in the form of a series. Did you know this, Christian? Yeah. <laughs> got to sign no up for idea. Apple Plus. Got to sign up for Apple Plus. Yeah, again. now I got another fucking subscription I got to buy. Uh, Apple TV Plus is going to unveil a new series in the Godzilla verse or the, what is yep, it called? The Monsterverse, whatever. whatever the fuck. Um, no, that's the. It's called Monarch movie. Legacy of Monsters because the group is called the Monarch Group or whatever. That's right. This is a 10 episode series from Legendary Entertainment spinning off the Monsterverse, as Christian mentioned. And supposedly it will take place um, after the events of Godzilla vs. Kong and before uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, the new Empire, opens next year. The yeah, show it's will got feature Kurt Russell, dude. And Wyatt Russell. Boy, yeah. that's interesting, because that... Well, apparently, it's a three-generation story arc or something. Oh, okay, so they could have his son in it or something. I don't know, or, or his portrayed son, I guess, but... Um, or Kurt Russell's dad might be played by somebody else that's not really related possibly. to him. <laughs> possibly. Either way, it looks it looks very good, and I'm very excited to see it. Here we go. Yeah, any more Godzilla monster versus Here's your synopsis. Cool. Following the thunderous battle between Godzilla and the Titans that leveled San Francisco and the shocking revelation that monsters are real, Monarch Legacy of Monsters tracks two siblings following in their father's footsteps to uncover their family's connection to the secretive organization known as Monarch. Clues lead them off into the world of monsters and ultimately down the rabbit hole to Army Officer Lee Shaw, played by Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell. So they're playing the same guy. Gotcha, yeah. Different eras. Taking place in the 1950s and half a century later, where Monarch is threatened by what Shaw knows, the dramatic saga spanning three generations reveals buried secrets and the ways that epic earth-shattering events can reverberate through our lives. Damn. That's deep. It's like butterfly effect, dude. That's uh, yeah, it is butterfly shit. <laughs> um, I again, I'll have to get Apple TV to watch that because I love Godzilla and anything related to Godzilla, as we know. Very happy to see that the Blue Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, the original David Yost actor, is returning for the thirtieth season. God damn, of to Power Rangers off Cosmic Fury. The- to face off against his rival, Lord, Lord Zed. Zed. That's right. Now I don't know if the original actor who played Lord Zed is returning as Lord Zed. <laughs> I just know that Lord Zed is returning yeah. and David Yost is returning as Billy Cranston. So I didn't want to say, I didn't want to go find that actor's name and be like, and blah, blah, blah is returning as Lord Zed. Cause I don't know. For if a second, is. I thought Lord Zed was Zordon and I was like, why is he no. playing Zordon? <laughs> no, no. Nope, Zordon nope. turned on the Rangers, dude. He's possessed. <laughs> Get the exorcist. Lord Zordon. Uh, we have you know, a uh, Lord <laughs> <of> Satan, <laughs> Rangers. You will all die. I love how it went. It went fucking religious. <laughs> Satan. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you're possessed, dude. Zordon got possessed by the devil. We got to get the Pope's exorcist out here. <laughs> the Pope's Russell, Power Rangers. <laughs> Russell Crowe, talk to him. Come on, mate. Let's relax. I don't know. Okay, the, 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 the you got to say a prayer, dude. 
Oh, shit. All right. Uh, we're going to cut through a couple of these stories for time. Uh, let's get oh, into Oh, hey, events. another thing yes. about Texas Chainsaw, there's a board game that came out. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, okay. The, the game soundtrack was released on a record. Yeah, I saw it. Did you see my, my feeling? Yeah, it was Lime Green. It looks interesting. I might get it. Let's get over to our events while we have the time to do it. Sure, sure. Event us up. Um, wanted to announce this really cool. RuPaul's Drag Race is coming to the Charleston Municipal Auditorium for an event, Night of the Living Drag. This is October 8th, 2023. Tickets are on sale now at all Ticketmaster locations. You can get details when you hit up our Facebook page. I like that formula it has on it, dude. E equals R U squared. <laughs> what does that mean? It means that, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I assume the know. R stands for Rue. It's like Rue, right? Rue squared. Well, then what's the U stand for? It's Rue squared. <laughs> no, dude, I think it's R U squared. Oh, uh, but what's the, so? What's the E? I don't know. That's what I need to figure <laughs> out. It's what the E could be. We'll investigate. Um, I have not mentioned this enough, and I'm sorry I haven't. Subasicon, i got to remember to mention that more. Coming up at Charleston's Coliseum and Convention Center, October 6th through the 8th. Tickets on sale now. You can go to subasicon.org. T-S-U-B-A-S-A-C-O-N.org. No, I do not request press passes for this event. You should. We, I'd go to it if you got us press passes. <laughs> I'm sure you would, motherfucker. I used to go to the one in Huntington. I've never I, been to I, it in I'm Charleston. Not, I know nothing about anime. Nothing. I went you to learn. The, I went to the one here in Huntington, and I was I was going. I mean, I'm, I'm sure this is all gr fascinatingly cool to you all, but I know I have no idea what's going on right now. Nah. However, I love the guy who founded and runs Subasicon, and I will promote it every day. And they do have some cool video game board game shit. I will give you that. Yeah. Um, that, and they, they got vendors and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, for sure. Con. I'm not dissing Subasicon. Don't make me You're out You're just to saying be a I prick. don't like anime. I oh know. I'm just God. saying they got more than just anime. They do. And I'm I, I'm very excited about it, and you should check it out. Again, Subasicon.org is the website. The Pikeville Comic and Toy Convention is coming up this Saturday, Christian. You going to stop by there on your way back home from New York? Oh, I guess you'd have to keep uh, going, wouldn't you? Okay. Um, the way. <laughs> it's an Appalachian Wireless Arena in Pikeville, Kentucky, and we can expect guests, including, if it loads, Noah Hathaway from The NeverEnding Story, Tyler Main, Jimmy Hart, uh, Bobby Blaze, uh, Craig Boldman, who wrote Archie Jughead and Superman Comics. Uh, let's see who else we got. Jeremy Clark, who wrote The Last Ronin. That's cool. Chris Nye in the house. I know him from the Wraith, right? Yeah, Wraith. Wraith. Who's the Wraith? Uh, Wraith is like, um, kind of like vigilante. Uh, in DC, he just kills people. Kind of fights people. I mean, he's more like Spectre. He's a little bit like oh. Spectre. I would, I would say. Uh, I was that sounds kinda... more like it. If I, I mean, Wrath and Spectres are pretty close. Oh, hey, I watched the Bash at the Beach. Uh... Dark Side of the Dark Ring episode. Side, Dark Side. And then I listened to some of Jim Cornette's take on it, dude. <laughs> it was so it was funny. Yeah, it was. He's oh, talking bad about I know Bishop Jim Cornette everybody. was loving that episode and how fucked up it was and how stupid it made both of the Bischoff and Russo look. It made them both look stupid. I mean, it need, yeah. I don't think you had a victor in that, except maybe Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Or Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> there you go. He came off sounding pretty intelligent. And that's one of, of Russo's friends. <laughs> Bischoff will be at the Pikeville Toy and Comic Convention again. Lots of great kids, great prices. They're coming up this Saturday, August 26th. Go check it out if you're in the area. ACW is coming to the Barbersville City Park Amphitheater on September 9th for Finish What You Started, and WWE's Val Venus is going to be in the house, Christian. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Awesome. Uh, they got a meet and greet at 6.30. Showtime is 7 to 9 p.m. Details found at the ACW Facebook page, or you can find the flyer on our Facebook page. And finally... Hey, when was that? 
September 9th. Okay. Might have to check Saturday. that one out. Yeah. And where's finally, this, in this Charleston, yeah. this is at Slack yeah. Plaza in Charleston, oh, West Charleston. Virginia. This is gotcha. called Slam Plaza. This is going to be a free wrestling event that's going to feature stars from ACW, ASW, Conquest Wrestling, and Power Slam Pro. So uh, just a massive car. A lot of people, yeah. And it'll just be a lot of fun. Again, it, they're going to co- turn it into Slam Plaza instead of Slack Plaza. Right, slam a slam a palooza, slam a palooza. So, and that are my events for the week, and that is my news. Christian, you got anything else? No, I think I covered everything I wanted to. Wanted to tell you about that dark side of the ring for sure. For sure. Oh God, it was it was an okay season, not the best, but it was okay. Yeah, uh, it's always informative. Like I said, don't forget to follow us. Go to podomatic.com, p o d o m a t i c dot com forward slash geekzip podcast. You can review the stories that we review by following us on Facebook. Also, please do so on Twitter, Instagram. Follow our YouTube feed as well. That's youtube.com forward slash geekzip podcast. We would love you to become a Patreon member. Get that exclusive content. Patreon.com forward slash Geek Zip Podcast. Christian, safe travels we, when you come we appreciate, home. We appreciate our fans and everything. We absolutely do. And uh, I don't, I don't want to say I love you anymore because that's grooming, dude. We don't love our fans. Okay. Anyway. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> for Christian, this is Ryan Zip. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Geek Zip Podcast. Listen on iTunes, Spotify, Podomatic, Facebook, Amazon Prime. Follow the Geek Zip Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Search Geek Zip Podcast.